Okay, we've got Des uh, Davis coming on. I'm going to invite her about wealth consciousness and the class that she's going to be guesting. Hey, hey. Oh. Get to where the sun is shining, which is my kitchen. Lovely. Kitchen, witching, and wizardry. I know. I was <laughs> saying that you're going to be in a computer training. Mm -hmm. um, but you can introduce yourself because you're here now. I am here now. Even though <laughs> I do love a good introduction, I must say. Um, but my name is Des Davis. I have a life and business coaching platform for spiritually and socially conscious entrepreneurs called The Rich Witch Life. And I empower emotional freedom alongside um, doing work on your business that aligns you with the fulfillment of your vision. So we're in the building, al alchemizing to actualizing. Mm. I love that. I'm realizing I should put it in the comments. Um, that we're talking about, is it fair to say wealth consciousness? It's fair to say whatever came, it was already said. We can roll with it. Okay, great. Um, and does this class in the educator training so that when people join, they know what we're talking about. Okay. Hi. Um. Um. So. I don't know, Des, like, how do you explain what you do as a business coach and like differentiate it from the other business coaches out there? Um, could we get even more specific, actually? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Um, like, even more. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe the, the transformation that you offer, I've experienced it firsthand. <laughs> when when people ask you, how you do that. Hmm. What do you say? I say that I take a mind body nervous system approach to creating a vision, uh, creating a business that's in alignment with your vision and values. I have a new puppy y'all that is not happy being outside. So excuse me while I open the door. Come on in Mateo because we can't have that on this live honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that actually there are a lot of people, a lot of coaches that are integrating these principles into their work. And so I don't want to create sort of a separation, but rather that I'm of the mindset of contributing to a new emerging dynamic around business and that I've had the um, pleasure and honor of working with um, folks who have had more or less of a marginalized experience inside of the business space, right? So these are folks that might be neurodivergent or folks that might be healers, um, facilitators of really niche transformations, um, uh, people of color, queer folks. Like really, I've had the honor of working with a range of humanity and assisting us with stepping into our ability to create what we want to create and our ability to contribute what we want to create contribute through business. Beautiful. Um, in the way I mean, the work that you're you do, I'm hearing a lot of, of a of a resonance with um, the work that I do. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, when you found out, you know, when I approached you, and you were looking into like what it is that I do mm -hmm. um, what was the like maybe where where were the points of resonance for you mm. well as you well know I think that your work is a leading edge in consciousness that's really speaking to a leading edge in consciousness and the way in which that can intersect with business the way that that can intersect from a healing perspective as well as um aligning us with the level of accountability to ourself, to our capacity to be resourced. And then what are the smaller pillars in consciousness that are big deals still, values, consent, boundaries, that are actually a part of that infrastructure um, as it intersects with business. So I'd say that, it, does that answer your question? 
I think so. Yeah, it's and it's bringing up new questions. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I I'm, I mean, you know, stop me if this doesn't feel like what we said we were gonna talk about. But I'm, I'm curious. Like when I, I guess what I'm looking for is a is maybe like a bird's eye view reflection mm -hmm. from your perspective of like where. I started and where ah. now yeah. in, in our like in our working together. I think w where you've come is to a place of continuity in the systems and the structures in your business, but also the income alongside the impact. So you've been making an impact, right? And um, your heart and your vision has always been in the right place. Our work together allowed you to create a business that sustains you and also contributes to the world that you want to see, right? And that we're all living in in a really positive and deeply impactful way. Um, and I'd say that that is like the core of what I do with all of the socially and spiritually conscious entrepreneurs that I work with. Um, whether there's sort of a, a piece of emotional freedom that needs to be the foundation to then building so sorry okay. to building a more ethical business <laughs> wow business practice that's in that's um in relationship to again sort of the broader strokes of healing consciousness that we're moving through collectively um so i'd say that a lot of times the business owners that i work with are like a microcosm of the macrocosm of change that we're that we're all contributing to at this time yeah, that was sort of my next question is like, what are the sort of main things that you see over and over that people in like healing spaces and coaching spaces are dealing with in our businesses? I would say like the big ones are anti-capitalist values that tend to short circuit the emotional freedom to prosper financially in business, that that tends to mitigate some of the creative flow that's available um, mm -hmm. to prosper from. I would say um, a longstanding history of sort of like being or feeling outcasted from, mm -hmm. from um, spaces like business and having a, a self-concept that reflects that and needs to heal and needs to be transformed to embody the aspect of yourself that can lead your business and thrive um, and is not willing to sort of sacrifice um, your own sense of being resourced in order to respond to the many different aspects of a running a business, much less a business that is speaking to some of the most um, tender aspects of our socio-political and cultural programming. You know, um, so again, that goes back to why I take more of a mind, body, nervous system approach. In addition to basic business strategy, there's that deeper level of calibration that I like to spend some time with all my clients to really help them um, not just like stand in your power, but know what that power is intimately and take an accountability for that that allows yourself and others to thrive underneath the umbrella of business. Mm. I definitely want to hear more about this intimacy with your business piece because that's something that keeps coming up with us. But mm -hmm. we'll go there. Um, I'm curious what I I see this a lot in in my work, um, and I have felt it myself. And so I'm curious how this um, shows up in your work. This this sort of um, really pervasive feeling that like without credentials, degrees, et cetera, et cetera, that you're like not legitimate. You know, I've I've worried about that in terms of like not being a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. um, and especially around business, you know, I think there's like a lot of an you know, I I feel like I've mostly gotten to a good place with it around business. Like I don't have yeah. M yeah, thank you. I don't have an MBA. Yeah. I don't have any like you know, proper training in, in running a business, I just sort of tripped and fell into like, oh shit, 
this is a business now. Like now I have to run this business and I have to do it in alignment with my values and I have to do it in, you know, and I, I want to do it in a way that, that feels good to me and sustainable to me and all this stuff. And anyway, this, this idea of um, like needing these credentials or certifications or qualifications um, comes up a lot in, yeah. in work because, and especially around the educator training in, in particular, yeah. because I think a lot of people are, are seeking trainings outside of traditional like academic institutions. Yep. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so this feels a little bit like old paradigm versus new paradigm, right? And I think new paradigms are always predicated by a major shift in consciousness that is predicated by the systems that were upholding certain standards no longer working, no longer fitting, no longer hitting the spot. And so it's easy to fall into a mindset of legitimacy versus illegitimacy. And if you have a history, a complex trauma history, if you have um, an experience that of yourself um, that is inlated with goal trauma, right? Whether that's from the education system, whether that is from like the socio-political system that we live in, depending on your experience, like no wonder, and that makes sense, but and in addition to the onus is on us to align ourselves in a in an empowered way with the emerging dynamic and understand that this precedent has not been set we are setting it right now right and so there's a lot of unpacking going on there's a lot of relearning going on um and from that perspective you can find yourself in good company yes Yes. Right. Um, which I think that you have. And I think that you've created as well, especially through the educators training. Um, so that's one angle that I could speak to it from. Right. The other thing is. Actually, I'll, I'll pause there. Well, what's coming up for me is like, you know, in, in 2020, when I was building this business. I was like, do I need to go to grad school? Do I need to become a therapist? You know, I was I was really like and I was doubting. I had a lot of imposter syndrome. I was like, I don't, you know, why am I qualified to do this, et cetera, et cetera. And I would imagine that you work with a lot of people in sort of stuck in similar mindsets where we're like, we ha we really have to get on our own side and, and start to go, you know, why I don't have training in this because it doesn't exist. It does that, that training does not exist. Correct. So why I don't have a degree in this because I'm inventing it as like, yeah. and like, that that does not make me illegitimate. It does not make my work less valuable. Um, it's it's just, a, and, and I, re, I had to look at like all these things that work for me, like craniosacral therapy and acupuncture and like, you know, flower essence therapy and all these things that like once upon a time, someone, came up. right. There was a person who was like, I think I'm onto something. No one's done it before. How do I turn this into a, a thing? Um, so, have you like, have you witnessed that within your clients, that sort of arc? Absolutely. I mean, that's where the emotional freedom comes in. Right. That actually is the deeper subconscious level work that we do to transform um, what I think are popularly termed as limiting beliefs, but are really rooted in a self-concept, right? This is like, how are we self-concepting, which is an ongoing process. And so uh, we don't just self-concept mentally. It is a mind, it is a body, and it is a nervous system level concept. And so that's the three prong that I like to approach. That's my, where my ethos in business and when it comes to coaching, it's this three prong approach in addition to the strategy, because we're not just up against the system. We're also up against where we've internalized the messages that the system has been sending and where that internalization is oftentimes a portal into empowerment, into our sovereignty and into our um, capacity to ignite a level of impact in the world that prospers your life and prospers the lives of other people. Right. And that to me, I think is a point of self-esteem. That's a reason to really fuck with yourself heavy. 
right? Um, and oftentimes that's the alchemical process that I will hold a space for my clients to go through as a part of actualizing their vision and business at the structural level, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I've, I've felt that from you and, and um, you know, it's, it's very helpful to have that, that reflection, that affirmation. It's like when someone is telling you like, your instincts are on point, your right. instincts are there, um, and 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 also you can have structural support to like bolster those instincts so that yeah. you're not sort of you know you don't have to be like you're not the first person doing this you don't need to figure it out as though no one has ever done it before and in some contexts like what you're doing, I would say is a very fresh iteration of work that's come previous to your work. Right. And so how to also um, know that you're in good company, but have the emotional constitution to stand on your vision and to bet on yourself and to believe in yourself. And oftentimes when you have a high level of emotional intelligence, you can. Um, it can be tricky to identify your advanced level of distrust in yourself or your vision or life itself due to the ways that systems of oppression have impacted our creative consciousness, which when it comes to artists, healers, um, practitioners, uh, folks that have niche skill sets that can be turned into a business are going to run up against, right? And that is genuinely my jam. I'm so proficient at distrust. You know what I mean? And it's funny because I'll say to my clients, like, okay, you know how to do distrust. Do you know how to do belief in yourself? Right. You know how to do hustle. Do you know how to do flow? Because in reality, it's both that gives you that sense of comprehensive foundation within yourself to be able to pull from and resource and access when and as you need it, right? Um, and not kind of feel like your success is up to a gatekeeper outside of yourself. Um, and that's a huge reclamation uh, or a huge part of the work of reclamation work that happens, I think, inside of containers with me. Yeah, I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and it's like, there's moments where, I, like, often, I really am on my own side. And I walk around, like, holy shit, look at what I've built, like, you know, and I, you've had me like, set goals. And then you've like, pulled up those goals and been like, Mia, can we like, take a second and acknowledge that? Yeah, like you did that. And you did that. And you accomplished that thing that you said you were gonna do. Yeah. Um, and, and having that sort of, like, consistent reminder from someone who really has witnessed it has mm. been really, really powerful. And I think, you know, something like my, part of my journey with money, having being an artist and having come from like trying to make a living, mm -hmm. exclusive artist, mm -hmm. has been like, if I have anti capitalist values, the only way to live in alignment with that is to not really make any money, or mm -hmm. like, make money to give it away. And there's like, still, you know, there's still patterns of that. There's still like, sure that but I I have gotten like with your support and with the support of other people who led me to you um I feel like I really I don't know cleared some kind of hurdle in that where there's still some stuff that you've witnessed where it's like when I have money sometimes it like falls away you know and and I go where did it go and then you've been able to say like Mia you made an EP like yeah, yeah you know yeah. you this you did that you paid you were living well that's why it's called the rich witch life because at the foundation your business is meant to support you you are the magical thing that is tending to the altar that is your business not the other way around right right and i think a lot of people um attempt to source a sense of self and or self-esteem by through their business, which you'll hear me talk to or speak to as an ulterior motive. And it's emotionally driven, right? And what happens is that's where we start playing within the realm of self-importance versus fulfillment, mm -hmm. right? And self-importance will have us proving, 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 proving. Um, 
and proving against our confirmation bi biases, proving against our history of complex trauma, proving against the internalized messages of the system, et cetera. And there's, there are other options, y'all. You know, that's really what I'm here at the heart of whatever I do client to client, that's at the root of my message, right? And that, that, that other option is up to you to design and make it dynamic, honey, while you're at it, right? That's my encouragement. Um, and it makes sense why that mindset is in place. But at the end of the day, being resourced is about being able to respond. Right. Being resourced is also about the safety that is the prerequisite to being able to play and play is what creativity is. And so even if you have the heart of an artist, you still have a nervous system, honey. And the bills need to be paid. And so how does all of it get to work symbiotically together and to create an economy of care within yourself and how you're operating with your business? That's the onus, person to person, right? That's the responsibility. That's the ability to respond. Yeah. I'm thinking also, like, you know, you might have an MBA, but, ha and, but that doesn't teach you to deal with your money trauma and your inherited trauma and all those that are impacting your nervous system and your ability to care for yourself. Which is what a lot of the clients of mine who are multiple six and seven figure earners are going back to heal Right. and clear and set right with themselves, right? Um, it is the congruence with yourself that precedes the sense of I am successful. It is not something that you create outside of yourself that informs you that you must be successful now, right? right? And that's a huge flip from the message that we've been sent all these years. I am um, starting a podcast with a dear friend and colleague of mine, and our last episode that we pre-recorded was around... Um, quantum leap culture, right? Mm -hmm. And how quantum leap culture is almost an antithesis to the climb the ladder culture that the nine to five mm -hmm. or corporate establishment has set forth for us, right? And the and the truth is is um, it's not only in response to the corporate culture that's been set forth it's also in response to this cosmic context of a quickening and acceleration spiritually that's happening for us at the collective level and so as anything is it's an and in addition to and it's about finding your right relationship and with your why and being more sustainably motivated not by what you don't want to be not by what you think you should be but the truth of who you are and that's something that reveals to you because you're available for it, because you posture yourself and you position yourself to receive your own truth and to make moves based on that truth and to prosper based on that truth. And I think that that's a powerful, um, I've used the word reclamation, but I also think it's a powerful way to just move and have your being through the world, um, is to have that level of agency and that that sense of discernment um, to be so purposeful, to be so in touch with yourself, intimate with your vision. So that way you can be intimate with the ways in which your business is or isn't supporting the authentic you. And that is the goal. Yeah, truly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we go here, I want to mention that you were the person who told me that I could do a six week class. Uh -huh. um, when I was before we started working together, I was trying to do these one off classes and they were not selling. And I remember you said, what about a longer form class? And I said, I can't even get people to sign up for these one offs. And you <laughs> said something about how like, that's because people because like a one-off doesn't like honor the the depth and breadth right right and so and people can tell that like one class is not gonna do it and then i and then i launched the six-week class really nervous i got 25 signups and immediately made like multiple thousands of dollars it became yep. like 
it was a total revelation in my business. And you were also the person who suggested that I do the educator training, which is something that is really like the sort of cornerstone mm. um, of my business. And I had a lot of doubt around my ability to do that. And, and yeah. you so thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure, my honor, my purpose. Good. Um, is there anything that you want to mention? Anything you want to plug on here before we go? Nothing that I want to plug, um, except honestly, your educator training. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was suggested for you to do this because in our work one on one, I was seeing how these core competencies, these core skills, these core transformations and consciousness could be leveraged in other industries through other yeah. facilitators and how that could actually have quite the harmonizing effect um, at a broader level. And so thank you for taking action on it. And also just um, encouraging anybody that's watching either from my community, your community to really allow yourself to join this program. Um, there are a lot of programs that are fluffy. There are a lot of programs that like you'll get a little bit, maybe not the full thing. This is like a whole last five course meal. Get nourished, take this course, because it's going to shift the trajectory of your consciousness and how that consciousness is um, interplays or interfaces with how you thrive through business and how you feel yourself and experience yourself in business. Um, and, I, and I do think that that is more than a worthy investment. I do. I You're welcome, Mia. <laughs> You're welcome, Mia. And for anyone considering it, Des is going to be teaching, guest teaching a class um, within the educator training. So you will yep. get to see her again. Yeah, you have quite the lineup this time around, I must say. I do. I do. It's a full, full lineup of, of people who've done the educator training and people who've not done the educator training, but whose work is really meaningful to me, both you and Sara, who's been in here watching us. So, yeah. Hey, Sara. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. I'll You're talk so to welcome. You. I'm so proud of you. Thank I'm you, so Dad. honored. Thank you for having me both on this live and also as a part of the educator training for the second time in a row that is beautiful. And um, anybody that has any sort of apprehension on the fence energy, be with that, get clear and be a, be a full yes if you're a yes, because this will definitely change the trajectory of your consciousness. And that is, that is some precious precious shit good okay. so, uh, <laughs> thank you des bye y'all bye i'll talk to you soon